Hey, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to be reviewing Scandinavian Biolabs and their Biopilixin activation serum that is supposed to increase hair density in up to 52% after using it for 150 days and reduce hair loss up to 89% at 150 day mark. In this video I'm going to be summing up their study uh, that was broken down on a 99 pages PDF. I just uh, pointed out the most important key points so you don't have to read through it and just sit back, get your daily dose of let's get here and find it out if this is something you want to get involved if you want to regrow hair and stabilize hair loss. Before we start with this video, as always, quick shout out to our sponsor, CoFiber. These are hair building fibers you can use to mask any thinning or patchy areas on your scalp to make your hair look thicker and better. So make sure you check out the link in the video description below where you can visit GoFiber, get a free sample of your choice and try them out. See if you like them. Now, before I try to consider any new products that are like non-FDA approved, uh, not that proven, um, but have pretty bold claims like Scandinavian Biolabs, I like to go and visit a bold page to see if the company is actually represented by real doctors. It seems like there is uh, one uh, person uh, who is responsible for the medical department and he has PhD in dermatology, which is actually something that you would want to have. Um, if there is a company offering you anti hair loss solutions. Right now, I would like to go ahead and talk about mainly their, uh, you know, activation serum, topical product, where it's worth the money, how much you would actually need to maybe see some results, like some of their uh, testimonials. Uh, and maybe I'm gonna talk a little bit about those as well. Uh, I'm not gonna be talking about the shampoo and conditioner, since we know that neither of those are extensively uh, contributing to hair regrowth hair loss reversal or hair loss stabilization. Their three main ingredients as they are describing are capilla longa, caffeine and uh, amino acid complex. So the most breakthrough one is capilla longa. What is capilla longa? It's a natural active ingredient that improves density in hair, eyebrows and eyelashes through a biological approach. It produces an epigenetic reset of the hair bulb restarting the activity of dermal papilla cells. Capilla longa, we've seen a clear link with the hair cycle. Uh, what we've seen with different markers is that we are able to increase the length of the anagen phase and reduce uh, catagen and telogen phase. So we rebalance the hair growth cycle, increasing that hair density and reducing the hair loss. We work with plants themselves, and that's the way to work with plants, but maximizing the response of those plants. Uh, what you've seen here is a callus culture. This is an aggregate of plant stem cells, and that's our raw material to work with those stem cells and make them produce the molecules that are gonna interact with our skin or our scalp. And here, uh, I'm gonna mention another company, Vitrus Biotech, as you can see them here. They produce and concentrate so-called phytopeptidic fractions from an optimized culture of stem cells. These types of phytopeptidic fractions are the ultimate responsible of the extremely high regenerative properties of stem cells. For the first time, this astonishing potential can be used in cosmetics. That makes of uh, phytopeptidic fractions the first cosmetic active of this category able to maintain the skin regenerative potential. So they're co cooperating with uh, this company that is supplying them with the peptide-like uh, ingredient, uh, Capilla Longa. Now, maybe I can go more into peptides and how they are being synthesized in another video, but essentially the key ingredient, uh, it's actually turmeric. What they are doing, they're modifying it in a way that they're um, actually gaining those uh, phytopeptidic fractions of it somehow. I can go into that process in another video and talk more about peptides and how they could be beneficial for hair loss. If you want me, I'll make sure you comment below. Another product will be caffeine. Uh, caffeine topical is something that is gaining a lot of hype. Lately, uh, Dr. Huberman talked about caffeine in his complex breakdown on how to treat hair loss. He mentioned caffeine as well, mainly because of this study. Uh, there was a randomized multi-center study, a uh, six-month study comparing 5% minoxidil solution uh, to 0.2% caffeine solution, where trichogram evaluations showed 11.68% improvements uh, in anagen ratios 
uh, in the minoxidil 5% group and in the caffeine 0.2% solution the improvement was 10.59%. It was comparable to minoxidil but it also needs to be noted that this study was actually sponsored by Dr. Kurt uh, it's a German uh, producer of Alpacine shampoo. Some of you guys probably know it. He's actually a big proponent of caffeinated solutions for hair loss like topicals or shampoos. So uh, we need to also uh, uh, keep that in mind. Yeah, caffeine has also shown some positive uh, results in uh, if it's used in a shampoo, it resulted in less hair being plucked out after regularly using caffeine in a shampoo. So it has something to do with, you know, anti-hair loss. Let's simplify it. Now, the last thing would be amino acid complex. Now, amino acid complex is something where I'm not that convinced because as long as you have a healthy diet consisting from a lot of protein intake that means your body will be able to receive enough amino acids that will contribute to healthy hair structure and texture besides L-lysine supplementation that actually shown some uh, positive results on hair regrowth together with iron in a female uh, pattern baldness study. There are many uh, products out there containing uh, amino acids, even mesotherapy that is delivering vitamins and amino acids. It needs to be done in a certified practice where the dermatologist uses a special tool for delivering the mesotherapy. I have not seen convincing results. This is not something that uh, can be used as a hair loss stabilizer. Maybe part of hair stimulation therapy with some, you know, PRP or some other uh, things like topical dutasteride. Another problem I'm seeing in their blend is that there is no ingredient that will be a hair loss stabilizer. There are only stimulants like caffeine. Potentially their peptide product uh, should be also considered more a stimulant. So I'm not seeing any medium that will be responsible for, you know, targeting the DHT pathway and trying to reduce the DHT or block the 5-alpha reductase naturally, uh, like Sopalmeto, for example, is known a natural DHT blocker. So I'm wondering why they did not include it in this blend. Now let's talk about the actual study sponsored by Scandinavian Biolabs. That's also something that you need to note because we know from history that uh, once a company is sponsoring a study, there might be conflict of interest. What I'm interested in is, is mainly what is the hair thickness improvement? What is the hair regrowth improvement on a square centimeter? These are the values I'm gonna be uh, mainly looking at. Who was involved in the study? 30 volunteers with alopecia. They also used wash test, combing test, a trichos scan, general photograph of the hair, cosmetic trichogram. So the evaluation was very high quality. Uh, I'm gonna give them props for that. And now it's going to get interesting because if we look at the volunteers, number of volunteers was 30, 87% women and 13% men. If you are a male interested in purchasing this product, males are heavily, heavily underrepresented in this study. Any results that potentially you can see in this study are going to be skewed because there are so many females in the study. And we know that females are more likely than males to not suffer from androgenetic alopecia. So that's one thing. And the second thing, if we look at the description of the volunteers according to sex and age and their hair loss types, we'll notice that there is one, two, three, four, five, six individuals marked with yellow where the hair loss is related to stress. And then the, the blue marking, you can see it's seasonal hair loss. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine individuals and six individuals that are actually not even suffering from androgenetic alopecia. That's the alopecia that most of you guys have, most of the watchers you're watching my video have because it's the most predominant type of hair loss worldwide. 95% plus cases of male hair loss is androgenetic alopecia. And male subjects with this type of alopecia are heavily underrepresented in this study. We can only see uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 subjects in this study suffering from hormonal type of hair loss. But even then, we don't know what type of uh, hair loss it is. Uh, is it the hair loss resulting from uh, under or overreaction of the thyroid gland or adrenal gland? Because these are also hormonal types of hair loss, but not necessarily androgenetic alopecia. Including subjects with non-androgenetic alopecia in a study that is meant to 
observe or experiment on a product that is meant to be used for androgenetic alopecia is super common. We have seen it also in case of Viviscal, for example, where they involved a higher number of females in the study and females that had hair loss resulting out of stress or maybe some seasonal shedding. And in this case, we are seeing the same. We are seeing good 50% of these 30 subjects having actually non-hormonal type of hair loss. And that means that it's pretty likely that if you catch those people uh, during the peak of the telogen effluvium where the hair loss is super excessive, the daily shedding rate is very excessive, is uh, way more than 50 or 100 hairs lost per day. And then hypothetically, if you were to compare those values to the values four months later, without putting those people or any treatment, you would get much, much better values, better regrowth, better hair thickness, because those telogen effluviums tend to even self-correct by themselves. And sometimes only minor intervention is necessary, but no treatments in term, in sense of like topical products, minoxidil, finasteride, or anything uh, like that. Uh, in this study, we are seeing the same thing, which I don't like. Also, if you look at exclusion criteria, now it's also important to exclude patients from the study uh, who have uh, not, um, been using minoxidil, for example, because if they actually started minoxidil and now they maybe stopped minoxidil a month ago or two months ago, and now they're enrolling in the study, they may actually get the telogen effluvium and now they're gonna be tracked here. And this is gonna be causing skewed results. I'm actually not seeing the usage of minoxidil being uh, one of the exclusion criteria. But now let's go to the actual results, guys. The actual results, are gonna be the hair density values. We can see on the left uh, 30 volunteers, and on the right we are seeing increase in hair density uh, in percentage uh, from the day zero to day 150. Now, if you look at the right column, you will notice three colors. The red ones are negative values. This, that means that the hair situation, the hair density values got worse on the 150-day uh, mark. The yellow uh, color represents the improvements that were less than 10%, and the green uh, means that the improvements were more than 10%. Now, why I did this distinction? First of all, I wanted to know what was the percentage of individuals uh, that did not respond or had negative values or worsening after 150 days of using this product. And there were actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight individuals. Eight out of 30 had negative um, uh, values, which means the hair density got worse after, which is not that good, actually. Let's talk about the, the yellow ones. We see uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 individuals. So more or less a half of individuals in this study got better hair density 150 days later, but the improvements were less than 10%. What does it mean? If you look at other studies done on the finasteride studies, minoxidil studies, where we also have a placebo group, which we don't have in this study, which is another minus, by the way, because oftentimes what we are seeing in placebo groups, minoxidil studies, finasteride, or low-level laser therapy studies, we're seeing that even the placebo group experiences uh, some form of improvement. And these improvements could go from one to 3% all the way to 10 or 11%, as we have seen, in some studies done on uh, low-level laser therapy, where even placebo group was able to experience a whopping 11 plus percent improvement. And also talking about that, all those 10% or less improvements in hair density per square centimeter, not that significant cosmetically, you don't even see the difference. Where you start noticing the difference is 10 plus, ideally 15 plus. 15 plus percent improvement in hair density per square centimeter or target area is usually significant, so significant that you already start noticing it with your bare eyes when you style your hair, when you comb your hair. But anything less than 10% is not. So we are seeing 25% more or less not responding, ending up worse, 50% responding, but not so you know, significant. And we are seeing maybe 25%, namely one, two, three, four, five, six individuals out of 30, so 20%, responding very, very positively. But 
could those very, very positive responses here, namely those six individuals, be just the result of having their telogen effluvium kind of naturally self-correct? Of course, yeah. That is why I'm not that hyped about this product and it's just not convincing enough to me. There is one more thing that I also noticed here, especially in the self-assessment uh, report, uh, where they talk about the appearance of new hairs. After 45 days of product application, 36.7% of the volunteers have uh, had observed the growth of new hair. It's unlikely that any treatment, minoxidil, finasteride, these are potent, powerful treatments compared to this one. That's why they're also FDA approved. That's why they go through rigorous testing and they're not able to grow hair in 45 days. None of the studies on minoxidil or finasteride could prove it. So how come this uh, study results in 36.7% of participants regrowing hair in 47, 45 days. For 49 euro a month, this could buy you two to three minoxidil bottles, probably two foam solutions that are more scalp friendly. They do not have propylene glycol in those. So you get a better stimulant, something that is more proven to work and you can get two to three times uh, the, the monthly supply for the money. They actually did a study also where they compared this treatment on to minoxidil, but not in terms of how many hairs it regrew. So it was more like a study done in a lab where they just compared minoxidil 5% ability to induce dermal papilla cells and proliferation and minoxidil's ability to influence growth factor IGF-1 production and compared it to their capilla longa. Uh, as you can see here, the results of capilla longa were slightly better or comparable to minoxidil, which still doesn't mean that it's as good as minoxidil. No, it just means that it can affect dermal papilla cell proliferation and IGF production slightly more positively compared to minoxidil 5% in the first 24 to 48 hours. It does not mean that it's going to grow thicker hair and more hair per square centimeter area uh, compared to somebody who uses minoxidil. And not even talking about that minoxidil 5% is not a successful long-term hair loss stabilizer. It's actually just a hair loss stimulant and most of the people who use it as a monotherapy actually stop after one year. I think the number is between 80 to 90% uh, in the studies simply because if they're not using any stabilizer uh, to begin with like finasteride, topically or orally, there will not be successful with minoxidil in the long run. So if you try to make a point here, uh, Scandinavian Biolabs, that your product is as good as minoxidil or even slightly better, and on top of that, it's natural, it's safe, it's drug-free, I still tell you, this is not a successful hair loss stabilizer. And I would probably not want to use it because for many people, minoxidil works just fine. Right now we have the propylene glycol free versions of it that are more scalp sensitive and scalp friendly. We have oral minoxidil. So there are more alternatives that I would prefer more and there are less pricey. Uh, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Comment below if you want me to review any other products that uh, you think it's good, something that you think has potential. I can do another extensive review video like this one on my channel. For more info about my one-on-one -on -one consulting services, check out the link in the video description below where you can learn more about how I can help you reach your hair goals faster, more efficiently, without any mistakes or bad setbacks, especially when looking for a hair restoration clinic and all that comes with it and help you maximize your hair transplant success as a patient advisor and somebody who has done hair transplants himself. Make sure you check the service. Make sure you check it out and I'm going to be here soon with another video. Take care.